helping you become perfectly healthy and toned. Brought to you by I'mTheFatMan.com. Today's video is another in the series of how to read food labels. This is actually a third video. If you have not watched the first two videos, I would suggest that you do so. On the first video, I discuss natural flavors and what that means. And on the second one, I get in more into natural flavors, specifically talking about MSG or monosodium glutamate. So I encourage you to go back and uh, look at those or view those uh, first two videos. Now today, it's something that you want to stick around for because I'm going to be discussing food dyes or what we call food colorings. And these things affect our kids. If you look at a lot of the products that are being geared towards our children, um, you know that a lot of the food dyes are, are being put into them. Now, as an adult, there are some products that food dyes and food colorings are in, and we have no idea that they're in, and mainly a lot of those are in cosmetics. And these things affect us on a cellular level, and many people don't know that. So I want to discuss this today and just give you an education on why you really need to watch out for food colorings or food dyes within your products that you consume. All right? So let's, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So... What I did was, I'm always in my grocery store. I'm going in there. I don't particularly buy a lot of stuff out of the grocery store. I tend to source a lot of my things and, and, and consume. I'm a big consumer of real food. But when I go into, go into the store, I usually am able to pick up products. And I'll take my cell phone and take a picture of these products. And that's one of the things I did. So I would be able to just give you an education um, today with regards to the food label. So I was in the aisle the other day and, this, and um, I picked up some pudding and a young lady was in the aisle with me and she kept looking at me. I, I guess she thought I probably was crazy because I was trying to position the, uh, the product just right. You see it here and take a picture with my cell phone so you'd be able to see it. So I guess she thought that I was some kind of crazy guy and I, you, you're seeing a a really tall, extra tall guy, I'm actually 6'7", uh, positioning a product on a shelf and taking a picture of it. I guess you thought that <laughs> you was trying to figure out what actually was going on. But anyway, um, so what we're going to be discussing today is artificial flavor. And you can see here, I'm sorry, not artificial flavor, but artificial color. And you can see here with yellow 5 and yellow 6. And many people don't pay any attention to these things when they see them on the backs of foods and you really really need to start doing that and like I said before I took this particular picture off of a pudding and it's a pudding snack and a lot of these products we're giving our kids and you will see the uh, uh, you'll see the danger behind doing that as you go further along in the video now let me pull this up here now most of us are fools for food dyes and that's not saying anything bad. I know I was a fool for food dye. I was one of the biggest consumers of Gatorade. I always wondered how Gatorade got that nice Arctic blue color to their Gatorade or how they got orange or how they got any of their funky colors. And also, I always drank juices as well. And I always wondered how we got all those crazy colors to the fruit juices that we, uh, that we consume. But one of the things uh, I really don't understand about the United States is that Europe places warnings on products containing food dyes because they know the dangers of consuming these food dyes, but we don't do that in America. If you follow Facebook, you know that people will post a lot of these graphics where they say that uh, Europe has banned certain ingredients in their foods, but yet America still, is, uh, still allows them. And I never really got the whole, uh, the whole thing about why we do that. Why do we uh, keep why do we know a lot of things are, are causing these health issues within us but we still allow them to be places in our food but that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this series so you can know or make an educated decision on the products that you're pur purchasing out of your local grocery store so again your place is warnings on products containing food dyes and we don't do that so what are the most common food dyes if you look here this is a long list I'm not going to go um, within this this whole list or go down the whole list but you can see that that you have products running the gamut uh, or colorings running the gamut from blue red to green and then you have yellow and if you look here 
you have yellow number five and yellow number six. And if we go back to the picture, we can see that those are within this particular brand of pudding here. Now, what are food dyes linked to? And one of the reasons why I wanted to discuss this on this video is that a lot of the food dyes are being placed in, in food that's being geared towards children. If you go back to the picture, and if you remember the picture that I just pulled up, it was pulled off a snack pack of pudding. And a lot of parents are giving their kids these these, these things uh, as snacks. And they wonder why their kids might be hyperactive, or they wonder why their, their parents have had, or I'm sorry, not the parents, but they wonder why the kids have had behavioral effects. I don't know about you, but I've seen on many occasions where parents are in the store and their kid just falls out and starts crying and say, oh, my child is sleepy. But maybe it might, might not be that your child is sleepy. It might be that you gave them some kind of snack earlier in the day and it's just now affecting them. I've noticed that we never really attribute anything to food. It's always some other condition. So a lot of things, especially with our kids, can be contributed back to, to food if kids are just crying for no reason or if they are just mad or moody for no reason at all. And these things also affect adults as well. Another thing is just cancer, thyroid dysfunction. A lot of people are having problems with their thyroid and they have no idea why. Um, in many cases, it might be fluoride. In many cases, it could be something else. But here again, you can see that it might have something to do with food dyes. And these things are being synthesized uh, artificially in a lab. So anything that is chemical and is not natural to us leads me to believe that it can cause some kind of disruption in the body. I don't know about you, but it leads me to doing that. And also tumors. You know, tumors, again, are associated with cancer. And again, I know that most people out there that are watching this video, you may say to yourself that, okay, if I just drink one thing of Gatorade or I just have one juice, then it's not going to affect me. And in many cases, that's true. But I've always tell people this, and I will tell people this so I'm blue in the face, that it's the accumulation of these things that affect us. It's not that we're drinking one thing, a Gatorade, a day. It's the fact that we are drinking this on a daily basis. If you look at most people, and I can say from my own uh, experiences that I was never a person that could drink one Gatorade and put it down. If I drink one Gatorade, that led to another one, and then that led to another one, and the same thing with fruit juice. So it's the accumulation of doing these things over and over again that actually brings disease within the body. So again, this is the third video about food dyes, and I'll be back with one more video where we discuss um, different things or uh, more things to educate you on your food labels. So this has been Darren Fatman McDuffie helping you become perfectly healthy and toned, and I will see you on the next video.